Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back. We got some more bite-sized business advice for you today. And we have a rock star guest who we were already joking with each other before we started recording. And uh, we got a lot, a lot teed up for you today. We're going to have a good conversation. We're talking about accountability, but more than that, the accountability paradox Allison, I love a good paradox. I am here. I got my popcorn ready. Welcome to the show, first and foremost. Thank you for joining me. Thank you so much for being here. I love being here since you were on my podcast. I just feel like this is a natural extension of a conversation. Yes. If you want to go listen to that episode, I will put it in the show notes down below. And of course, compare. Who's the better guest? We want to know in the comments, was it me or is it Allison after this episode? We're here to have a good time, obviously. Um, but Allison, no. So I want to dive into the accountability paradox. We're going to explain what that is. Uh, so first, let's kind of anchor in that. I know I want to see how you came to realize this in your business with your clients. So define for me what this accountability paradox is with small businesses and entrepreneurs. Okay. So in a nutshell, the accountability paradox is the idea that we become small business owners with this idea that we're like, yeah, I, I own a small business. Like I'm a rock star, right? And then we fall short of achieve, achieving our goals because we don't have anyone there making sure that we show up every day and we do the parts of the business that we don't like. And we all start with passion, right? Every business owner starts with passion. But at some point when your business grows to a certain level, there's a lot of behind the scenes, back of house stuff that you don't want to get stuck in, but you do. And there's weeds. And what happens is your business starts to struggle because you get caught up in doing the things that you hate and you don't get to do the things that you love. So you stop doing the things that you hate for obvious reasons, and then things start to fall apart and you lose control of your business. And so there's this big joke. I have a set of clients that hired me and I sent them our very first meeting agenda. And it was like, it was probably 30 bullet points of all the things we were going to nail in this 90 minute call. And I got a Slack message back and they were like, um, Allison, I think we just hired you to be our boss. And I burst out laughing because I was like, I never thought of it that way. Like, I'm not your boss. You know, I'm not even your coach. Um, but in some ways, that's what they needed. They needed somebody to bounce ideas off of and then to be like, okay, y'all said you wanted to get this done. Here's how we do it. And I'm going to make sure you get it done because I'm going to be in your ear being like, hey, did you do the thing we said we were going to do? Did the email go out? Did the video get recorded? So I'm I'm a little bit of a uh, I don't know a gnat in your face to to a certain extent. <laughs> That's a really good tagline when you're attracting people. I'll be the gnat in your face. Like oh, you know, my, my ultimate tagline you, is Allison. my tagline is I'm not bossy, just aggressively helpful, and I have a T-shirt that goes with it. So. I love that. You have to send us that picture. We're going to post it on Instagram with this episode. But I think, okay, so I heard a, a giant mistake, though, in your process. You sent a meeting agenda to an entrepreneur. What were you thinking? <laughs> Listen, this is how I roll. And as we were talking about before we came on, I am not for everybody, and that is okay. I am for the action takers who know they need a little bit of a butt kick. They know they need the structure and they're willing to, to do the things that they don't like to do in order to grow their business. And so the 30, that was an exaggeration. I think it was probably like 11 or 12, but even that, you know, it, a lot of it was like, we're just, we're going to hit, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Like, let's do the SWOT analysis. Let's, and those were concepts that, you know, they hadn't really thought about before. And so how we did it yeah no I, I like it and it's important too and it's a shock for people because you get into business to be your own boss well a lot of people do and then they realize that they don't want to be their boss or anyone's boss and they just kind of go through day by day and get nowhere so what i'm kind of curious about then is you're you're shocking people with your your meeting agendas which is awesome um take me through a little bit of that process of determining what kind of leadership they need from you if they're not willing to show up and, and lead themselves necessarily? 
Oh, that is a great question. Um, so I have my clients come from very different. It's I have wildly different clients and it's kind of funny, but they all come back to the same idea of I'm really good at pushing them uh, in the right direction, even though all of my clients are headed in different directions. And so I think the leadership that um, that they look for from me is the encouragement, but also the tough love. And when you're an entrepreneur, you to a, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of rebel in you. Like I'm not corporate. Nobody tells me what to do. Right. And I, I work with a couple of people who are anti-corporate. They've come out of corporate. I shouldn't say they're anti-corporate. They've transitioned. Right. And so they absolutely, like I start telling them like, these are deadlines we need to hit in order to launch your product. And you can see the walls go up immediately because they don't want deadlines. And I have to very lovingly say to them, okay, if you don't want that deadline, that's fine, but do not expect your launch to happen the way you think. Do not expect to break the 100K mark with this launch if we don't have pictures done, if we don't have videos recorded, if we don't have you know the, the email sequence taken care of. And it's just little things like that. They don't, they want to, you know, develop the product. They don't want to do the nitty gritty. And so I come in with that tough love. I'm, I'm the reality check in a certain way. And I think, I don't know if reality check is a leadership style, but that's sort of what I provide. And I have straight up had clients who have said, see you later. Like we finished the contract and they were like, you're not for me. This is not what I want. And I'm like, okay, go find someone else who will call you. I'm not that girl. The people who, who want the Enneagram 8, the challenger, the powerhouse, we get along fantastic. The people who can't handle me, that's totally fine. There's someone else out there for them. Absolutely. You ha yeah, you have to be who you are authentically or else they're not going to get their results. So I like that. And I'm curious, um, I, I have a theory, but I want to just first clarify, like, what is the typical size range of the companies that you're working with? I'm still in the small company range. So these are entrepreneurs that have maybe a team member, but mostly they're working with contractors still. So they don't have their own VA and they're looking to outsource a lot of their stuff. And so I come in and I'm helping them basically manage all of their contractors. And then we do some in-house VA work for them. But funny, you should bring that up. My um, new service that I plan on launching here in Q2 is going to be a VA matching service where I literally, because I now know your business and I'm the one creating your systems, I will now go out. I will find you the VA that matches your core values for your business. I will train them. And then you can stop paying me an absurd amount of money to do things that your VA could be doing for a reasonable price. So. Okay. No, that's helpful. Cause here's, here's my theory. And I want to see if this is present with your clients. And when you, when you meet people, when we get into business, it's typically someone who has a passion for a product or a service. They love doing the thing and meeting with the customers and doing all the things. When they start to grow that business or start to achieve a little bit of success, then there's a few failures that come in. And with those failures start to creep in the doubts. And what naturally comes then is if they don't have guidance from someone like you, they start to kind of recoil back into their shell a little bit and they only do the things that feel safe to them. So that's why they're not building out the email sequences and they're not putting together a launch strategy. So first of all, do, do you find that that's kind of the, the cycle of getting into business for people? Absolutely. And I think that that is another reason why they're not building their team as they need to, because they don't want to be responsible for paying someone else. As when you, when you hire a contractor, you know how much you're paying and you know what it over, you know, the deliverable, but when you hire a team member, it's a whole nother, it's a whole nother level of responsibility. And I think that after they've experienced a hiccup or a failure, or they've hit a plateau, they've, they've crossed over that hundred thousand mark, but they can't seem to get to that 250,000 mark. And they're thinking, but if I bring on a team member I, and I can't keep this up, I can't keep level, leveling up, now what do I do? And so there's absolutely a fear of failure that prevents them from taking the leap. And we have reached the paradox because they started a business to be their own boss, but they are unwilling to be the leader that they need to be. So dissect the paradox. When we get there, what what is the next, if they were not to hire you or me or anybody else, but they wanted to grow their team by themselves. What is the path to get past this paradox and be a leader? And I guess, I guess this could kind of be a trick question because some people are not meant to be leaders and that's okay. 
It's true. But I want to hear you. This is very true. Okay. So if they're not willing to hire anybody and invest, um, honestly, I would just say get an intern. Go to a local college and hire an intern who is getting a degree in branding or marketing or business or whatever your thing is and be like, hey, how about you work for me for experience? And then you can put my company's name on your resume when you graduate. Um, I actually, the one of my clients that I have now literally did that. They had, uh, I transitioned from one business to another. And in that middle of my transition, they didn't have me. And so they went and got an intern and I trained the intern. She worked with them for her summer. And then I came back in and took back over again. And it was a great way for her to get experience and for them to get work for free. Um, and I actually also did an intern uh, in a similar way. And then I hired my intern on as my VA because I was like, girl, I spent all that time training you. Let's just make this official and let's keep you around so I don't lose you. But that would be to me the obvious next step. If you're not willing to hire, get an intern who's willing to work for free and get experience. Yeah, that's that's a good solution, but it's a terrible solution. What should we really do? We should really hire you and we should hire someone to build out our business the right way. So talk to me about when someone brings you on, like what are the things that you're going to go through and do in their business to really set them up for success and be the boss that they need to hold them accountable back to this paradox, but also help them get to that next level. Okay. Well, the very first thing that I usually do is go in and just sort of let them um, kind of just vomit all of their business struggles. Like what, where, what is not working for you? Because that's what they want to tell me first. And then once they've told me all that and we sort of get that emotion out of the way, then I turn around and say, what is working? Let's, let's focus on that for a little bit. And then I go in and we start dissecting where, where's the systems breakdown? Do we even have any systems in place? Because I have found that most of the businesses that get to a level where they've experienced success and they've plateaued, or they're starting to experience failures, it's because they don't have systems in place to support the growth or even sustain where they're at. And so my first step is usually to come in and say, let's look at where your systems are breaking down, you know, let's run the water through them and see through the, I like to say you run the water through the gutters so you can see where the leaks are. And then we can go in and we can fix the leaks. So starting with that, because I also don't believe, and this is sort of going back on what I just said about hiring a VA. I don't think you should start building a team if you're not ready to train them. And so I think that that I've been on the receiving end of that, where I was hired by a coach who she was, her business looked great from the outside. But when I got tired and I could peek behind the curtain, she was a hot mess. And I cried on the daily trying to figure out how to work for her because I didn't know what she wanted. She was a typical visionary that had a thousand great ideas, but the inability to communicate them. And so my experience with visionaries, I've learned how to pull out from them what they really want. And I've learned how to poke holes in those ideas that are just kind of like, wouldn't it just be great if we could? Yeah, we can't. So let's just let that one go. And you know, let's, <laughs> let's just, You're an let's idiot. Moving on. Reality. I told you, I'm a reality check girl, right? Like whatever. Um, but when they hire me, that's kind of what I do. We get this, we get the emotional, what's not working out of the way. We talk about what is working. We find the holes in their business. <clears throat> And then I start filling in and fixing what's missing or what's broken. And then we talk about, okay, what's the next level? How do we go to the next place? And for some of them, um, that is going to be hiring a team member or firing a contractor. I have a, a client right now who, now that I'm working with him and I'm managing his contractors, he has fired his photographer because she wasn't producing the kinds of things that he really needed from her. Um, and now, you know, we have a, we have a guy, we've got some video guys that are not really promoting the business the way they need to be. Not, the, not with the vision that my client has and he didn't have the time to address it. And then here I come and I'm like, listen, did you see the videos they created this week? I, this is not how we want to represent your brand. And he's like, oh yeah, that's a good point. I'll have a talk with them. And I'm like, no, 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 I'll have a talk with them. I got this. Like, that's my job. You go be the visionary. I'll go back to them and be like, hey, guys, you're not on brand. Let me remind you of what our brand is. And so in some ways, as much as I am the, the bad guy for my client at times telling them no, I also take that off their shoulders and they don't have to be the bad guy for their contractors, for their team. That's my job. I go in there and, and do all the messy work that they don't want to do. Yeah, it's it's an important role to play too. I'm thinking of uh, you know me and my business partner honestly because 
he's he's for sure more the visionary he came up with the company the architecture all that stuff and i i had a similar vision and when i met him that's when we kind of came together and said hey we're kind of chasing the same thing here like let's do this together if you ask him to use a keyboard he gets <laughs> hypes so <laughs> like someone someone obviously has to put these things into action and make them work but what is that balance like how do you manage that balance because i know you said some people are you know for you not for you and that's totally fine but taking things off of the visionary's plate keeping their stress level down being yeah. the bad guy you know how are you making sure that you are working with people effectively so that you're only giving them what is absolutely necessary and also keeps them propelling the company forward with those visions the dreams and the the ideas for new products that I mean, the easy answer, easy to say, hard to do is boundaries. Boundaries for them within their own business and then boundaries between me and them as that that client uh, relationship, just making sure that there are, you know, there are things that I will do and there are things that I won't do. Um, and they have to understand that. Um, I'm not really sure if that answers your question, but but. I don't know. We kind of repeat the question so I can see if I'm answering it correctly because I'm not sure I am. Well, you you're pretty much there, but it's really about how are you managing that relationship so that they know you're anytime you say no or you say that idea is stupid, it's not <laughs> it's not them and you're not attacking them. Like how do right. you manage that respect level to just know okay. that everybody's on the same page moving the company forward? It's just this is how we're gonna do it right now. Okay. Okay. So that makes more sense. Okay. So what I like to call myself, I'm not a sounding board. I'm a backboard. So I want my, my client, when we talk, I want them to continually throw ideas at me. And the ones that are not, not that they're just bad, but they're not quite right yet. I'm going to bounce back at them, right? They're going to bounce back off the backboard and come back to the visionary and they can shoot again. The ideas that hit the sweet spot, those are the ones that drop in the net. They score the points and we take action on those. And so when I give the, the visionary that opportunity to bounce those ideas off the backboard, it's not that the idea is horrible and that we don't move through it. It just might take them five, six, seven shots before it hits the sweet spot. And so perfect example, I had a, a woman that hired me to help her plan out a three week challenge. We did a four hour session where she just literally was like, I think I want this. And I think I want this. And she just kept dumping all these ideas for her challenge. And then I took notes. And then after like 20 minutes of just listening, I was like, okay, here's how I would suggest you structure it. And then we move things around. And we did that for four hours straight. By the end of the challenge, she had three weeks planned. She knew exactly what she was saying, what she was teaching, the Facebook post group, all the things. She so got people to sign up at $100 a pop. She had three hundred people sign up. Wow. Hired me back. Hey, let's plan a 40 day course because all I did was let her bounce ideas off of me and I dropped the ones that were good into the net and then I gave her back a structure and we just blew it out of the water. And, and you know, we're now we're working together again. That's so awesome. I love that. Now you said before we started recording, uh, cause the, the title for this episode is why every business owner needs a boss. And you said, well, it's more of every business needs a boss i i'm gonna make you give me a reason okay. why because i agree with the first title and i know you do too you're just trying to be politically correct to some degree why does every business owner need a boss and before you answer i will say that the coo is the boss like yes. that's they're to keep the visionary in check so yes. now allison you must answer the question why does every business owner need a boss like you Okay. Honestly, because without one, they will plateau, they will get frustrated, they will burn out and they will give up. And they will they can only get so far. You will not find there is not a single business out there that is making millions of dollars that doesn't have people supporting it and doesn't have a voice of reason keeping the the brilliant visionary in check and also moving forward and not not continually spinning their wheels on the same idea, but making minor tweaks here and here, you know, here and there. No, we need time to move forward or it's time to ditch it. It just doesn't exist. You won't find one. Preach. I love it. I'm glad you said that because that's, that's hundred percent true. So if you don't have that, if you're listening and you don't have that person, you don't have that backboard as Allison said, and you don't have a way to move your company forward, 
consistently and you're on that roller coaster of ups and downs, the yo-yo of business, I call it, you need to reach out. And Allison, you have, I'm going to put it on the screen here. You have a quiz to get started with this and, and to start working with you. So what, tell me about this quiz and then who should go take it. Okay. So the idea of the quiz is basically to see what is it that's holding you back from breaking through that plateau? Whatever that plateau is, is it the 100 grand, the 250, the 500,000? What you've reached a plateau and you don't know why you can't break through it. The idea of the quiz is to help you figure out what is preventing you from breaking through that plateau and then what that next step is to, to reach it. It could be, and, and this is true for visionaries, sometimes they achieve their vision and then they're like, uh, where do I go from here? I plateaued because I don't know what I want anymore, right? Maybe that's it. The quiz will tell you. Maybe your problem is that you are a horrible boss to your team. Your team is ineffective because you're not good at training. You're not good at communication. And you need someone to come in and manage your team. Maybe your back of house systems, either they're broken or they were never built to begin with. And you're trying to build a business on, on hay and what you need is stone, right? And so maybe that's really an issue. In my personal experience, those tend to be the three biggest bottlenecks or, or struggles that business owners who have reached that plateau and can't break through are facing. And ironically, even at, a, at any level, my own personal coach is looking to break seven figures right now. And she took, she and I were talking about my quiz and she's like, oh yeah, systems, that's my problem. And I'm laughing. I'm like, you're about to break a million dollars this year and you're struggling with systems. Are you kidding me? But it's because her level of systems has increased so much that yeah, that's her bottleneck. And so it doesn't matter what level you're at. Those tend to be the three core reasons you're not able to get there. And this quiz is going to help you figure out which one you need to focus on. That is so awesome. I definitely want to check that out. I'm curious on the leadership one. Uh, is it worded like that where you said it'll tell you if you're a horrible boss or do you, do you soften no. the language? <laughs> no, of course not. I'm much more um, politically correct, careful in my wording on online. You know, I'm a little more careful. When, you, when we talk, it's very unfiltered. The nice That's thing is, is that when I write, I can reread. There yeah. shall be no politically correctness on this show. Allison, I love you. Thank you for coming here. This was an awesome episode. I really appreciate it. For those of you listening, watching, whatever platform you're on, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a minute of this ridiculous show where we give you bite-sized business advice at lunch and we bring you amazing guests like Allison. So take action. Go take that quiz. It's down here on the screen if you're watching. It'll be in the show notes. And let us know in the comments, what is the one takeaway? What are you going to do with this? I don't want you to listen to the show and do nothing and go on with your day. Like take action, go see how, what is that plateau in your business you need to get past. Go see if you can find someone. She's on the screen next to me who can help Wait, you get the past. Way. You're pointing the wrong way. On my screen, it's that <laughs> way. So I'm just going to point both ways. There's a woman on the screen and I'm not it. And <laughs> go talk to her to help grow your business. We'll see you on the next episode of Harmonious at